guys. How are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton. I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I wanted to get up and make a video because it has been a little while since I've been here. Now, that's just YouTube. I have been very active in my groups and in my programs and in my projects doing those things, but I really haven't been up here on YouTube and I, I kind of wanted to just explain why and I wanted to assure everyone that I'm okay. I've actually received messages on social media and I've received some emails from you just saying, hey girl, are you alive or what? <laughs> and so yes, I am alive and in fact, I'm in good health. I do not have COVID. I do not have the coronavirus. I am doing quite, quite well except for my voice, which tends to go in and out of full functionality anyway. So it's a little gravelly today. I'm just, you know, that's just part of my thing, man. I'm a Taurus and I've got, I've got throat issues. I've always got to be working on my communication, but I also have to be working on the energy of the body. And if the body is starting to feel exhausted or if the body is out of alignment, you can always tell by the way I'm speaking. And so to that end, good segue, I have been doing a lot. As some of you know, we uh, we started the 2020 Intuitive Intensive in February, and that's a three-month program, a 12-week program. Wait, yeah, 12 weeks. I'm just so bad at math. Yes, a three-month program where we uh, were taking part in like comprehensive metaphysical teaching, and then the final four weeks, which just ended today, was all about coaching. We'd meet three times a week and we would just do active coaching for sometimes two, sometimes three hours. So I've been doing that. I've been in the intensive energy. I've got another intensive coming up at the end of June. It's an energy healing intensive and then another one coming up. I think we slid it though. I think it's in the end of September, early October. It's a channeling intensive. Uh, so there's just, there's a lot of projects happening and I've been working in, in those projects and at the same time, we have some new projects entering the timeline, if you will. And it's funny because every year I kind of have the same projects in place and I, and I take care of those projects and we make sure everything gets done. But this year it was different and it was different months ago. For example, we have an annual bliss retreat for members of the Lightworkers Lab, which is my online spiritual community. And probably around December, I started spiking in and connecting with the future energy pattern of the bliss retreat. And you know, you can actually do that guys. If you have something that you want to call in and develop that's happening in the future, you can work with it now. You can connect to the energy and draw it down into your present, but I won't get derailed <laughs> anyway. So I was trying to do that though. I was trying to hook into the future energy of the bliss retreat and I felt nothing. And in December I was like, well, why am I not feeling anything because normally there'd be a lot of excitement as we're planning the different workshops and the speakers and the activities. I'd really feel into that. But I, again, I felt nothing. And I think it was around January I made the decision, well, I guess we're just not doing the bliss retreat because spirit's just giving me a big talk to the hand crystal, kind of a big no. And so I announced in February that there wasn't going to be a bliss retreat this year. And I didn't go into my explanation as I've just explained it to you, but now I know because within weeks, all of us are neck deep in the coronavirus and we're social distancing. And so many of us are being let go from jobs and it was just not the right time, obviously, to even coordinate a future retreat. So that's why that didn't happen. And I also have a yearly business class that I, I run but I didn't feel any energy around that. So I decided not to do that. And now I know why. <laughs> so those projects went by the wayside, but other projects are actually coming in. And these projects are even bigger and even uh, more exciting. Uh, they're not for this year. They're for next year. Because again, I think spirit was just giving me the heads up that something was going on globally. But there's a lot of creativity going into this, these new projects, a lot of organization, um, a lot of development, some of which I'm very strong in, some of which I'm not. So thank goodness I have partners, but I've been working on that. A couple of different projects, actually. So I've been keeping busy and I've been kind of just staying off social media because it gets so toxic. It really gets so toxic. And I've always told you, y'all, like, don't spend your time listening to 
the news networks. Don't spend your time listening to polarizing opinions, people just screaming on the internet or screaming on the Fox News or the CNN. Like, Don't put yourself in that energy because any energy that you take in, it changes who it is that you are. It changes how you think. It changes how you feel. And that starts showing up in your body. So let me tell you, I practice what I preach in this regard. And I, I've just felt the need to, to disconnect a little bit from all of that. And some of which is showing up on YouTube and I'm like watching YouTube too. And like what YouTube's doing and, oh. and I love YouTube and I've been on YouTube for a few years now, but, um, in the last year or so, I mean, I think around April of last year, I was gaining anywhere. F I can't remember. I don't really care that much, but I think I was gaining anywhere from like one to 2000 people a month subscribers. And in the last, like not even taken into account this year's from probably summer to the end of last year, that just stopped. And I think I've gained maybe a thousand subs in the last six months. So it's really anomalous. It's obvious that the algorithm is changing. It's obvious that different people are seeing different things. And so I've just been examining uh, what I need to be doing with my presence on YouTube. It's, it's a very politicized platform as well. There are issues around all kinds of things. Um, but nonetheless, I'm super grateful for YouTube because that's how I found most of you. And it's how I found most of the people who are in the Lightworkers Lab. So I'm very grateful, but at the same time, like what's going on with YouTube? And I'm not sure. So that's another reason I've just kind of stepped back to figure out what I want to do and figure out what excites me. And in that time away, I, I came back a lot to YouTube because I actually get really excited about it. I get excited about making videos. I, I get excited about making content. I get excited about connecting with the people that do care to be connected with me. Like that is exciting to me. I don't like dealing with the trolls. Nobody does. I don't like dealing with the, the shadow parts. Nobody does. But the good with YouTube and with all y'all far outweighs the bad. So I've actually become more clear that I don't want to give up this platform I don't want to just let it fall by the wayside. I actually want to I actually want to be here and I want to be here with you. And wherever that takes us it takes us. Look, look here listen. Here's one thing I know after many many years on this planet is that I I'm not into forcing the field. I'm not into making sure I have this many subs and this much engagement. Like I don't care, okay? I just trust that if I offer something from the purity of my heart, spirit's going to make sure that the person who needs to hear that or connect with me is going to find that. I don't have to worry about doing what spirit knows how to do. Isn't that a relief? I don't have to figure out how to reach the people that spirit wants to reach through me. Like spirit takes care of that and I love it. Even though I've taken a break, but every, everybody needs to take a break from time to time, but I'm still excited about being here and I would love to grow and I would love to reach more people. I would love if you liked, commented, or subscribed, shared this video. I'd love to grow the community, but whether that's here on YouTube, whether it's through my online group, whether it's through the projects, which are currently being called in to the physical reality, it doesn't matter to me, spirit will get it done. Do you know what I mean? Boom. Speaking of that, let me get back to <laughs> how you can connect to a future thing that you want to manifest because I think that people don't really know that this is possible. Let's just, let me just blow your mind for a little bit before I get off this video because I know you haven't heard from me in a long time. So why don't I just talk a little bit? So there are all kinds of timelines. There's the present timeline, the me here now. We're talking, how you doing? We're present, we're now. There's the past timeline, which is when we've experienced the things, the uh, encounters, the relationships of our past, the things that brought us to this place in life. And of course, there's the future timeline, that which we are even now creating for ourselves, but it exists and it's filled with potentialities or more clearly, it's filled with potential. And it's not just one timeline because there are many potentials. This means that there are actually many timelines that are 
forming at any given time. And you determine the future that you are going to experience. This is why we want to get clear now in the present about our past and everything that's brought us to this this moment and to clear all the stuff that doesn't serve us from our past and even from this moment, those relationships that we are observing while we are all in quarantining. Like, do we, should we maybe be shifting some of this stuff or shifting our own behavior in the now? All that's just an opportunity to get really clear about what we want to create in the future. And so I have a vision, actually a shared vision. I share this vision with three other people. I have a vision for this project that we are presently calling into being. And a people perish for a lack of vision. If you don't have a vision about your future, the life perishes. The life gets stuck. The life starts to become a loop. You're just looping around over and over again because you don't have a vision for your future. The people perish for a lack of vision. So I spend time in those future timelines from the position of now based on everything that's brought me here and I consciously create it by having a vision of it. What do I want it to look like? Who do I want to be with me while I'm in this thing that I'm creating? And who am I drawing to me through this project or through this creation? And where is this taking place? What do I look like as it's happening? I get the vision going. I start playing around with the conscious dreaming of that future event. And in doing so, I build its energetic pattern. Because at our most basic at our most foundational, we are just energy. The past, although we are not existing in it right now, the past is energy and some of us carry it around within us. Too many of us let it bog us down. And the present is comprised of energy. And this present field is so active. Things are moving and shifting all the time. And spirits making offers all the time right in our now field. But that future is also an energetic pattern and we can create it now by visualizing it. And the more we spend time doing this, fleshing out the details, getting really clear about that dream without, by the way, needing it to be a certain way. We always want to remain fluid, right? Because we want to create the future with spirit. We want to co-create that so that it ends up being the very best for us because sometimes we are not the genesis of all the good ideas. Sometimes, and I dare say most times, spirit is the genesis of all the really cool ideas. So we always want to co-create that energy pattern of the future with spirit. Let spirit inspire us as to what we are visualizing. But the more we do it, the stronger it becomes, the more developed this future pattern becomes, and it starts to run the energy. The energy of it starts to get stronger and stronger, so much so that the future pattern becomes magnetic. Just like the behavior and the thoughts that you are complicit in your present life, these are magnetic and attracting to you according to the way that you're feeling and thinking. So too does this future pattern become magnetic, but magnetic to what? Magnetic to more good ideas, magnetic to be developed even more, but the more magnetic it is, the more it pulls you to it. Imagine a cord between you and this future thing. And it's through this cord that this future pattern is developed. And the more you feed it, the more you envision, the more you dream, the more you plan, the more you organize, the more this energetic pattern pulls you toward it, therefore making it more and more likely that this future event takes place. Am I making any sense? Hello? Are we awake? The more we spend time connecting to future self, future events, future conditions, and dreaming them according to what we want, the more we actually call it into our lives. So you can do this with anything. And I've been doing that with 2021, y'all. I've been doing that with 2022 as well. And I do it with projects. I do it with people. I do it with myself. Who do I want to be in five years? What do I want to look like? What do I want to be talking about? about what books am I going to be reading and or writing? What audience am I going to be having? I have to spend time envisioning that and building that with my imagination and giving it color and frequency 
and getting specific with it without being attached to it so that it will happen. Long story short, I've been doing some of that too while I've been gone. Anyway, I want you to know that I love you very much. For those of you who are in the Lightworkers Lab, Trisha Carr, my partner, and I are going to be doing a bi-weekly broadcast called Light Shine. That's every Wednesday night, and I think it's at 7 p.m. Central, right there in the Lightworkers Lab group. And I'm also going to be uploading here to the YouTube channel just excerpts from our various teachings or conversations that we're going to have. So this is all to say my intention is to provide you with more content and also to come up live from time to time. I'm going to have some time until the next intensive and also create more, more content for you. Tell me how you're doing. How are you guys? How's the COVID-19 treating you? What possibilities are presenting themselves for you? What kind of a future avatar are you creating for the reality that you want to step into? Like, share with me. I want to know how you're doing. But please know that I'm okay. I'm healthy. I'm still marching here, marching right along with my husband who's growing out his beard and who looks like that hobo with a shotgun guy, Rutger Hauer, looking a little crazy. But that's okay. Quarantine's teaching me so much. And one of those things is there's no use to being vain. Why are you vain? <laughs> Just get comfortable, man. Get comfortable and look for the opportunities. And I have been doing that. And on that note, I hope that you know, oh my God, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that I have got nothing but ET phone home love for you until next time bye guys